Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to the show. Glad you joined us today. We're going to have a great episode. We have Dr. Patrick Gunn, who is the cow-calf extension specialist at Iowa State University. He's a ruminant nutritionist. We're going to talk about something that is probably one of the most economically driven things that you need to do for your cow herd, which is testing your hay. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Dr. Patrick Gunn. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Gunn, welcome to Doc Talk. Thanks for having me. Folks, this is Dr. Patrick Gunn, and he is the extension cow calf specialist here for Iowa State University in the Department of Animal Science. Um, cover the state. I know that you cover a lot more than just the state. You're, you do a lot across our country in cow-calf nutrition and, and an expert in cow-calf nutrition folks. Um, you know, today we're going to talk about hay testing. Yep, absolutely. Well, obviously, I think one of the biggest things that uh, a lot of producers overlook, particularly right now when we're in this period of tight margins, is we, we start looking for ways to cut costs. And I think, uh, you know, philosophically, you know, for me, one of the worst ways we can go about cutting costs is not testing our forage in the first place. Because if, you know, if we're, if we're not testing our forage, um, any supplementation scheme that we've got going on is a complete guess. So if we're under supplementing, we're probably losing production in some way, shape, or form. If we're over supplementing, obviously we're wasting money. So, you know, as, as we talk about forage testing in general, I think it's a greatly underutilized uh, process on most operations. And most of all, um, I think it's probably one of the best return on investments we can have for any uh, given operation. Yeah, and you know, I, I see that all the time. You know, just like what you're saying, we're we're sitting there going, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna step over dollars to to pick up a dime." And mm -hmm. and when we're not testing our hay, you know, you, you start to think about under supplementing. If we'd have a harsh winter, um, and yep. and body condition score on our cows, and then breed back. Yep. potential it's just it could be economically a, a wreck by something as simple as hay test yeah absolutely and i mean even beyond uh, body condition score and breed back i mean there's been tons of research done some of it by kansas state um, in the late 70s up into the mid 90s it looks at body condition score and late gestation uh, nutrition how it affects not only breed back not only general body condition score but quality of colostrum amount of colostrum uh, long-term health of those calves so you know, it's really imperative that we make sure that that nutritional status is correct all the way through late gestation, clear through lactation. Right. So now, a after you get hay in, I mean, is there any time period that you need to to wait till after you put up hay, or can you just, if hay comes in and it's put up, I can start testing immediately on when it's coming in and on arrival? Well, if it, if it's really dry, if it's you know 90% dry matter, you can probably get by with testing it right away. Um, typically, we say you know test it as close to the time of feeding as possible. That allows you to still make your rations and supplements um, as need be. But you know when you bring that hay in, even if it's 80, 85% dry matter, it's going to go through a sweat a little bit, and we're going to bind up some nutrients. Um, so the big thing is is allow yourself enough time to develop your supplementation scheme, but do it as closely as you can to the time of feeding it. Okay. Well, when you, when, you know, 
some of the things that we're going to talk about today, you said, you know, how many samples, what kind of samples to mm -hmm. take, where to sample the bale. You know, I, I think that, that when we think about different ways of storing it and 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 making sure that, hey, quality is, is maintained, mm -hmm. uh, this is just going to be a great show. Thanks for having me. You bet. It's great to have you, folks. This is Dr. Patrick Gunn. He's a cow-calf extension specialist here at Iowa State University. When we come back, we're going to talk about different how many samples to take, which way to take those samples, and then what you're going to do with the samples after you get them. It's a great show. Stay tuned. More from Ames, Iowa after these messages. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ellen Unruh grew up in East Central Kansas and earned her bachelor's degree in animal science from Kansas State University before attending veterinary school there. She is currently working on her master's degree in veterinary biomedical sciences, studying heat stress in feedlot cattle. Upon graduation, Ellen will focus on food animal medicine and do beef cattle research work. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide radio and TV. The all new Better Horses Network. Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom-made vaccine because every situation is different. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Patrick Gunn. We're at Iowa State University where Dr. Gunn serves as the cow-calf extension specialist for the state of Iowa and beyond. He's a ruminant nutritionist and we're talking about hay sampling, which is something that is just, can't believe anybody that has any cows wouldn't do it, but they don't. But let's talk about how you how you go about it. Let's just walk through yeah. samples and tests and and how you take those samples and different things of that measure. Absolutely. Um, you know, as we talked before, I I think it's a grossly underutilized process. But even those that utilize forage testing, I, I don't know that it, they always go about it the correct way to maximize the value associated with um, taking those samples. I, I think the biggest pitfall that we often run into with producers is quite simply they're not taking enough samples. So you know maybe they test one or two bales out of a lot or maybe even one or two bales at the, out of everything they have for the entire winter. And so you know I think first and foremost we got to take plenty of samples. And when I say a lot I mean that, that that's every cutting from every field because obviously we got different composition of forages in every field um, and we're going to make multiple cuttings in most instances. So, so the big thing is we want to take 20 samples from every lot. So every cutting in every field if possible. Now that doesn't mean we're going to test 20 samples, we're going to make a composite sample out of those 20. Okay. But we need to take 20 random bales from any one field and any one cutting and put them into a single uh, Ziploc baggie to send off for analysis. Okay, so you go in, you take your 20 samples. Um, depending on the bale, is there a different type of sample? I mean, uh, we always hear about the core sampling yep. technique. Is that what we're going to do on this? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're essentially looking to get a core sample, something that's fairly representative of the entire bale. Um, you know, if you're looking at small square bales, typically we just set them on end lengthwise and just puncture right through that last flake of hay, so to speak. Um, now, the biggest thing is, you know, I highly encourage producers to 
invest in some kind of hay coring probe. Um, you know, I, a lot of people do grab samples because um, they say that mimics what the cow is actually grabbing, but oftentimes we lose the leaves, we lose a lot of that uh, high quality dry matter um, because we're just grabbing kind of the long stemmy stuff out of the bale. So, so highly encourage using a core sampler first and foremost, but with small squares or large squares we can just tap right into the end of the bale. Um, if we're utilizing uh, round bales, big thing is cut through the net wrap and then take a core sample 12 to 18 inches deep. Typically 18 is what I suggest. Okay, so then you bring them back in these, these samples. Do you put all 20 of them into something and, and mix them up and then take a subsample of that or do you just keep the 20? Um, it, it's completely up to what kind of probe you have and how much sample comes out in that probe. A lot of times I suggest producers put that in a bucket, mix it up, and then s send off a quart bag full from okay. that particular lot. Um, some samplers are set up and designed so basically over 20 samples you only actually pull a quart of material out of there. At the end of the day we want to send off about a quart's worth of material to the testing firm. Okay, and then, and then uh, obviously when it gets there we have tests that you can request or... Absolutely. Things that... All right. Well, folks, it's time for a break, time for commercials. Uh, again, hay testing might be one of the most economical things you'll do for your beef herd this year. Make sure you do it. We're going to talk more with Dr. Gunn when we come back after these messages. We're on the road at Iowa State University. Stay tuned. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc., Hello folks, Dr. Nels Lindbergh here with Production Animal Consultation and Animal Medical Center out of Great Bend, Kansas. Today's BQA tip of the day, we're thinking about handling our cows for this fall. Everyone's getting done with fall harvest and thinking about handling their cows and getting them preg checked, moving them off of grass onto whatever, whatever residues or pastures they may be moving them to. When we do those things, we think about stress on those cows and we want to do everything we can possibly do to minimize those stresses. And so, Cattle handling, handling those cows is a very important thing to think about. When we move them off pasture, gather them, move them to another pasture, move them to another residue, or as we're bringing them in to get them preg checked, um, we just want to do all we can to minimize hot shot use, cattle prod use, all those things. And it's about positioning and anticipation and pressure and release and focal point on that eye. And uh, we just have to do those things to do the right thing for the cattle which our people demand that we do the best we can in terms of animal welfare. And there's nobody cares more about animal welfare than those of us doing it. So keep it forefront in your mind, think about it, do it, and keep at it. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom-made vaccine because every situation is different. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Patrick Gunn. We're at Iowa State University. And Dr. Gunn is the uh, 
extension cow-calf specialist for the state of Iowa, does a lot of work in cow-calf nutrition, production, management, and different areas. We're very thankful that he would take time out of his busy schedule during this time of the year to come and spend with us on an important topic. And, and Dr. Gunn, when we send a sample in to, to a laboratory, what are some of the tests and what are some of the things that, that we're going to be asking them to do? Yeah, and it's really going to depend a lot from producer to producer what, what basic information we need. I think at a bare minimum, obviously we got to get our energy and we need our protein and if possible calcium and phosphorus just so we can kind of balance those macronutrients within the diet. Um, you know, and we can go about a lot of different ways. If you have a more conventional feed stuff, such as silage or hay, um, you know, NIR would be a perfectly acceptable way to go about testing that forage and runs anywhere from $15 to $25, depending on the lab and how much you want to pack into it. Um, if you have a, what I consider to be a less conventional feed resource, like uh, corn stover, um, maybe a really low quality CRP hay or something like that, that they don't have a lot of uh, samples on file, um, we probably need to do a wet chemistry on that, which is going to be a little more costly, but I, I would still uh, suggest that it, it's an extremely good return on investment. So come back to me a little bit then, and let's explain to the viewers what the difference between an NRI and, or NIR and, and, and uh, uh, wet chemistry really is. Yeah, and so uh, NIR is really just computer automated. It's near infrared spectroscopy. Um, over time, um, we take the wet chemistry analysis that we have on multiple feed stuffs. You know, they run 10, 20,000 samples through and um, can calibrate the computer basically to take a snapshot of that feed resource and give us all the information we ever need on it. Um, unfortunately, when we're utilizing some of those uh, less known or less widely used um, samples or feed resources, oh. um, it's necessary to do that basic um, wet chemistry um, kind of the traditional under the microscope on the lab bench type chemistry to uh, get those energy and protein values, uh, mineral values that we're looking for. Gotcha. So feedstuffs that are common, we have a big reference lab. Absolutely. And, and so you really fine tune. It's kind of like anything. You get something in that you're not used to looking at, probably need to go back to the basics. Yep. And Absolutely. Get that done. So you get the crude protein, you get the energy, you get the calcium, phosphorus, um, uh, you know, I assume vitamin A uh, could be one of the vitamins that we might test for if we were going to look at anything? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to start adding some bells and whistles to the analysis, vitamin A and E I think would be really imperative, particularly if we're in drought stressed regions or we're feeding some really low quality forages that probably don't have vitamin A and E, I think that'd be imperative. Um, particularly here in the Midwest, we've seen a lot of vitamin A, vitamin E deficiencies um, around the time of calving the last couple of years. So I think that'd be a good one. Um, you know, depending on how you put up those forages, uh, iron analysis, any other analyses that may be antagonist to your general um, micronutrient, micromineral program, I think that'd be a good addition as well in many instances. Well, it's outstanding. And, and now when we come back with Dr. Gunn, we're going to talk about some of those scenarios out there that maybe when your hay comes back and it tests a little low or it tests just right, how you might handle some of that, how we might combat that and move forward with your, how, with your cow herd in, in proper production. Thanks for watching Doc Talk, folks. We're going to take a break. More with Dr. Gunn after these messages. When looking at the number of farm and ranch operations, the USDA Census of Agriculture says cattle and beef production is the largest single segment of American agriculture. The census also says the average age of the American cattle farmer or rancher is in the late 50s. In order to support the continuous supply of U.S. beef, these producers need to do some business planning to successfully transfer their cattle operations to younger, independent producers. My name is Sam Hans. I'm part of the operation here south of Garden City, Kansas, known as Triangle H. Our operation starts with an irrigated farming operation and also involves cow-calf as well as farm feedlot. So obviously the beef industry is very important to us as a marketing tool of those products grown on our irrigated farm. I feel especially privileged not only to be a part of the beef industry, but to have had the opportunity to be one of the original six delegates from the state of Kansas as the beef checkoff system was established back in 1986. And as I reminisce back at that times back there in the early meetings in the mid 80s and early 90s, to me it was very humbling and gratifying to see all segments of the industry come together with a common goal and that was to advance 
the sustainability of the beef industry as, and by way of a product that was going to bring satisfaction to our consumer. Hi, I'm Marissa Kleistuper and ever since I was a little girl, I have always known that I wanted to grow up and work alongside my dad. He has been my hero since I can remember and got the opportunity to come back home and work alongside my dad on a daily basis and learn from him and watch the family operation continue to grow. And the other best part of my day is uh, my two boys get to come alongside and work with us and learn from my dad as well. But more than anything, as I look at this whole program, is what it's allowed us to do as a sustainable program in the beef industry and it's allowed us to bring future generations into the operation in order that the beef industry might be sustainable for the future. My, my pride and my pleasure to have my daughter and her children to be part of our company here as Triangle H. Thank you. Horn flies are a nuisance in a production loss, so getting rid of the problem is important. What I like about the vet gun is you don't have to go out there weekly to treat them with a topical fly applicant. It has some duration, it lasts. You see the increase in weight gain, it just works. I've used it in our 1500 cow-calf operation, and it makes me more confident in saying, hey, this product's gonna work on your operation too. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. It's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Howdy folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Patrick Gunn. We're in Ames, Iowa at Iowa State University and Dr. Gunn is the extension cow-calf specialist and ruminant nutritionist. Does a lot of work. We're in, in cow-calf nutrition and production. We're talking about hay sampling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the winter time, folks, when we don't have grass, we don't have uh, crop residues anymore, and we're supplementing hay, and we're feeding those cows hay, um, you know, what happens when I get my, I get my, I get my hay test back? Mm -hmm. now, now what do I do? Good question, because I think that's the one of the biggest issues we get we get people take the sample and then you got to utilize it right I mean yeah. we, we got to put that investment to work for us and so I think the big thing is is you know just seeking out who, who can help me with that you know whether it's your local extension agent whether it's a nutritionist um, you know both of those individuals should be able to work with you um, you know if, if you like pushing the pencil to paper and want to do some of your own uh, supplementation schemes that's fine too but I think the biggest thing is is we got to utilize the information that we've got at our fingertips and you know, first and foremost, figuring out is that hay going to meet the requirement for those cows at a given stage of production? Um, if not, obviously we got to come up with some kind of supplementation scheme. And, you know, since we're investing the money and we, it should be all about dollars and cents, you know, what's the lowest cost way to get us there to meet our demands for those cows? Um, I think on the flip side of things, and, you know, the further northeast and maybe midwest we get, we get a lot of producers that actually have hay that's probably way better quality than what they need for their cow herd. And so, to combat that, how do we get around that? Whether that's moving to a TMR and limit feeding, um, whether it's you know just doing night feeding or restricting access to that hay. Um, I think the big thing is, is sitting down with a nutritionist or your local extension agent and developing that supplementation or that limit fed scheme that best utilizes the resources that you have available to you. Absolutely, and and you know I think about you know we live in the Midwest and in there there's so many things to supplement with mm -hmm. that if you need it there's byproduct feeds and and different things that we can go out and grab that that make pretty good supplements absolutely 
that and also if you have something hey that's too good we have some you know we're, we're around a lot of grain we're around a lot of different things where we can blend absolutely absolutely and yeah, so I mean, whether it's your local co-products, whether it's corn, I mean, whatever's the most advantageous and most cost-effective for your operation, you know, no one supplementation scheme is going to be the same. The big thing is that we take the forage analysis, and that's, that's the bulk of the diet, and make sure we develop the rest of the diet around there in as cost-effective manner as possible. Perfect. Well, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian and your local nutritionist. If you want to know more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Thanks for watching the show today, folks. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson signing off from Ames, Iowa at Iowa State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to doctalktv.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.